welcome back. It is almost 2023, and we are here one more time for not any good things. That's right. We're here for the top <laughs> worst. I am Will TLD, the former Apple specialist creative and genius. Alongside me every week is the Apple creative retired book publisher, soccer mom recorder, Jurassic Park owner, black coffee drinker, juror number 12, the retirement home president, Mr. Keto Trout, drummer, Frank Funk, is here hey, what's with up, me Will? as always. You're yeah. right. What's your, what's your 2023 uh, goal? To be alive? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, like, uh, uh, yeah, I said, gave you that quote from Keith Richards l- uh, last time. So I guess yes. that that's applicable. You know, it's good to be, uh, it's good to be here. It's good to yeah. be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to spend, uh, I'm going to be having one night with Earth, Wind, and Fire. I bought tickets for my wife for that to go to Atlantic City. Uh, oh, and then we're going to just that... be with my sister for the evening because we have kids and, you know, you can't really do much when you have kids. So, well, and when you have adults who go to bed before nine o'clock. I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire in New Orleans at uh, in um, 1995. Mm. 95? Yeah, 95. And they were awesome then. I'm sure they, you know, what's left of the group should be good now. So. Yep, I'm just looking forward to just seeing some live music again right before the end of the year. By the way, if uh, we're doing the top worst in this episode, if you would like to go check it out on the top here, you can go to the top five best that we've already done. But this is the worst. So let's talk about it, Frank. You're going to go through your top five and mine. Um, our lists this year are completely different, which is good. So we have a lot to talk about. So let's talk about your worst. All right. So coming in at uh, number one, I'll start with number one, is the M2 MacBook Pro 13-inch. Um, basically, I that's selected worst, that. That's your worst overall, right? Yes, that's number okay, one. That's a, number um, one. And I, I chose that because after looking into it, um, it's basically the same chassis that they've used in the past. It's exactly the same chassis. And it's, the the only difference is the new chip, which is um, which is not to say that the new chip isn't isn't good. It's just that. I kind of expected uh, more new things with that new chip, you know. Um, but so anyway, that came in as as my number one. My number two is the iPhone SE. Um, now I chose this because I never really saw the need for the SE um, at all, but um, it seemed to be a, a low cost for a lot of people to get them into the iPhone structure. But I just felt that it, I don't see the need for it. I really don't. Um, well, I could, do see the need for it, but it's what they, they didn't really add much to the second gen. That's really what it is that people are, we're just using a lot of old stuff in there. Right. They, at least the storage capacity is 64 gigs, but you know, they also increased the price of it as well. But yeah, I mean, I, I, they should just add just a tiny bit more to it. Yeah. Uh, my number three is the iPad 10 generate or 10th Ugh. generation. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I, I don't know why. There's so many mistakes with that iPad. Like, it's like ridiculous. The fact that it didn't replace the first one. Uh, and then on top of it, it's using the first gen Apple Pencil, which is a like, how old is that product now? Seven years old, probably that Apple oh, Pencil? Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, um, yeah, I just don't get it. But, you know, maybe it's just a matter of, you know, they had this um, old stock parts sitting around and, you know, they just wanted to use them up. I don't know that it, that could be the issue with it. So so just, then, so just so everyone understands, the first Apple Pencil came out September 9th of 2015. So I was correct on the seven years. Yeah. Yeah. So they're using a seven-year-old device, you know, to work with a current generation model, which almost looks like an Air, which they changed one feature that everyone does agree with, with the camera being centered. But the rest of the lineup that was either updated or changed does not have that line. Yeah. It's yeah. just strange, strange. Yep. Yeah. It's one of those marketing things. Like, you wonder what what the, the marketing the team thought process of that. Yeah. So number four is the studio display. Now, while I absolutely love the display for what it is, what I don't love about it is the price. Right. Uh, you know, 
I, I bought a Mac Studio, and I just, I, you know, I, I just couldn't see spending another fifteen hundred dollars for what I do anyway. Let's put it that way for the display. And then, right. if you want the height adjustment, it costs you more money. So uh, that that made my worst list. And then my last is the Apple Watch Series Eight. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about this a little bit before, and that is, you know, why would you buy a Series Eight for like? Another one or two hundred dollars, you can get the um, the newer one, the larger one, more advanced features that that you know. But but their pricing structure has always been that way. If you commit to a certain amount for another hundred or one hundred and fifty, you can go up. So you always you're always in that dilemma about well, if I'm in for X, eh, for a few more. Dollars, I can I can get the bigger, better one. That may be yeah. part of their strategy. I don't know. I mean, at least they're keeping the price the same. Like Apple Watch Series Eight, at least is the same price. At least because if they like increased it, for an example, it would have made no sense. So yeah, yeah, that that's just a really weird thing with the uh, with the Apple Watch Series Eight. As the watch keeps getting a series upgrade, but nothing significant is being added to it, and that's and that's the point you yeah. know that's why i still have a series 4 and i still have yet to want to upgrade uh until i get to that point but good list i agree with everything on this list honestly i thought i would say se shouldn't be as high i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily think it's that bad it's just an affordable phone and they're just trying to get people who are very old who can't use a hey, 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 anymore hey. Let's not yeah. pick on the seniors yeah <laughs> well listen they need, right, you, they need some a, love and technology too you know we do, but like someone who would be like my father in law would not need a seven hundred dollar phone. Okay. That's the reality of it. If anything, yeah, I would but, buy him a, but you a as his favorite phone. son in law should just get him one just because you love him. And he won't use it. He refuses. So I try, <laughs> but we're not gonna get there. So we're gonna go down my list of the top five worst. So starting at the bottom, working my way up. So that's the way you're supposed to do it, Frank. Uh oh, sorry. Apple Studio Display is on my fifth. The main reason I put that on there was again the price. That should have been a thousand dollars. And yeah. two, they reused a display and a camera system from an iMac that, to be honest, there was nothing other than a tiny bit of brightness increase. It's exactly the same as an iMac old school display. And that's why I don't like it because they reuse parts again to make a display that nothing enhances that from a previous experience. There's nothing yeah. there's, and that should have been a thousand dollar display tops with yeah. the height adjustment already included. Yeah. So I, I agree. I think that would have been perfect for that. Now, my second one. And this is going to go. Oh, this is why it's not the top five products, more the top five moments is the emerging unions at Apple stores. We had a whole story about this, and we don't agree that unions are going to work the best for Apple stores for a lot of reasons. Yeah. They're also joining unions that don't make any sense to what they do. Uh, and so far, from what I understand, there's a lot of agreements and disagreements, but things have been taken away based on some of the things that I've read out there. So the idea of unions and Apple stores to me is just not, doesn't work. Well, in that like environment. What, what my, my biggest bone of contention from the very beginning was, all right, here's what you get. List what you get without a union, what you and I got um, other than the hourly wage, because you know, that's going to fluctuate over time, right? What additional benefits are you going to get? I mean, you know, I I pulled out my paperwork and I looked at the benefits that were offered. I mean, there's pages and pages of benefits that you get right off the bat. So, and I could never find a definitive answer what the unions were going to give them additionally. My only conclusion from that was they would go into collective bargaining. They would get I'll say the majority of what they already get for free and Apple would take some things away and on top of it, they'd pay union dues. I'm going to so, get this. So Apple in back in October 
announced additional funds for education and new health care features in some states. But the unionized employees of the towns in Maryland, which is the one that unionized, will not receive these benefits. So that, that's the point I was trying to make. Yeah. They're not going to let them have perks because they unionized. So this is what we're talking about. If Apple's going to – Apple has definitely this year, and I put it on my top five, has improved – what they offer to their employees at a retail level to help them not unionize to satisfy them, which well, I, I think they that, have. You know, you, you had said that they're, they're going to penalize them. I wouldn't say it's penalizing them because they're not, remember, them. They're not allowing, they're not giving them perks that well, they are giving to retail employees. Once they sign a collective bargaining agreement with the union, that agreement is in effect. It's a contract. So it's going to be in effect for whatever term they sign, whether it's two years, five years, whatever it is. So anything that the company itself uh, gives to the non-union stores, the union stores won't get that until the next collective bargaining agreement. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yep. So that's one thing. Uh, the third thing I thought was the worst idea was killing the iPod Touch. I. Holy. So I here's why because I think like someone like my son who is not going to be ready for a cell phone anytime soon would have somewhat the same perks of an iPhone by having the touch. Now, could you give an old iPhone and just get rid of the cellular plan? Absolutely, you could totally do that. But I like the idea of the pricing of the one. It was like a, it's like a starting point for him. I mean, right, people right. could say that the iPad is a good starting point for him too. But for something for him to carry around with him, I think they still could use the iPod name. The iPod name, I think, is still valuable. And now they just killed it. So, is why why can't the iPod name live still going around this world? So to me, I think the iPod still was valuable. I think they could have still sold an iPod or updated it, just maybe not updating the iPod and giving it all these magical perks, but I think there was still value to it. Oh, you think maybe they could have um, taken some features out and made features exclusive to the iPod? I No, I, I don't think well, there's nothing exclusive they can add to the iPod, but I think having a low priced, you know, touch device in their hand mm. is still something very valuable to have without getting um, a full iPhone. Yeah. So that's what I think personally. So that's me on the killing of the iPod touch. And then number two is the Mac pro not being released because remember the goal was in two years when they announced the M one chip that they were going to have all their Macs upgraded and Apple failed to meet that goal. Now that could be because of what's happening in the world at the time. There was right. no, Pe the, the pandemic was just starting and they weren't, you know, looking at what could possibly, but also Apple just may have not have figured it out yet. And they shouldn't have made that deadline because now people have this expectation on oh, waiting for the Mac pro, make for the Mac pro. Well, now right. they set themselves up to fail. They have now missed that deadline. So I think having, I think that not meeting the Mac pro deadline or at least announcing that they're not going to make that deadline would have been, you know, something we did yeah. get a Mac studio out of the deal, which again is probably, which is like the top product. I mean, collectively we thought that was like uh, that and the AirPods pro were definitely the two best yeah. products this year, but they definitely need to figure out what that, you know, and again, no one who's watching this is buying a Mac pro me and you are not buying a Mac pro, right. but I'm very curious what Apple can do with technology, with that kind of design. With their M1 chip, yeah, I'm. You know, I, I I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, they're going to bring back the 27 inch iMac, um, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, that that's possible, but uh, right now I don't see it happening. But my top number one is definitely the iPad 10 generation. It's so fresh in my mind of this <laughs> release of this pro. I'm like, I just bought a MacBook. I just bought an iPad Air. Why would anyone for a hundred dollars more not get that air right with the better chip with the, the second gen support other than the camera being placed somewhere else, which is not that big of a deal because they have they, they the camera can move within the scene of FaceTime anyway now right, right. with the wide angle camera. I just don't know why people would buy that model. I just don't know why. Well it's just a confusing decision. If they got rid of the other one, I could, okay, fine. But they didn't do that. 
Yeah. And or if they would have brought this model out and just replaced it at the same price, I don't think people would be upset. Right. You right. know, but it's ridiculous. It's a stupid iPad. And now you have what five iPads? Six. Yeah. You have six iPads in the lineup right now. That is so much stuff yeah. right now. Yeah. That there's that there's very little difference between them. Yeah, yeah. it's just stupid. They really, they that was a really stupid decision. The iPad this year, I think, other than the iPad Air, they really just messed things up hmm. this year. Well, I think perhaps the iPad 10th generation will be one of the ones you'll see uh, deep discounted at Costco and BJ's and uh, Best Buy's, things like that next year. I just think they're, you know, they're going to be relatively cheaper or cheap. So we'll see what happens with Apple in 2023. I mean, so far, I think 2023, this was probably the, I looked it up. This is the, like, it's been about six, seven years with the amount of products that were released. This was like the smallest amount. And that has a lot to do with, of course, what happened with uh, inflation. You know, prices overseas went up dramatically. Right. And it, it's a tough year in tech in general. Well, <clears throat> well I will say this, um, now is the time to, if you're looking at buying some stocks or thinking about buying some stocks, now is the time to get into Apple stock. It's at, I think this morning when I checked, it was like $123 a share. It's $130 right now. There you go. I mean, it's now people say, well, it's still $130, but you know, Oh, you and I owned it when it was uh, almost uh, seven hundred dollars a share, and it split. Remember? Yep. Yep. So, it's the price of today is still higher than when it split, and it went to like one hundred and twenty three, one hundred and twenty five. But um, this certainly is, I think, a good entry point. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, we made money regardless. I mean, we're oh, yeah, we're, yeah. You know, no matter what, we have made money on on Apple stock. Just right now, the entire market is terrible. And, you know, until we get a new president, at least I don't see that. That's not happening anytime soon. So, no. So, yeah. So the market's going to struggle for a little bit. So, yeah, invest in it. You know, Apple's definitely a safe bet unless they do something really stupid. Yeah. But otherwise, a uh, hey, great 2022 is a way to end it with our worst. So I wanted to bring it down in a negative mood. And that's exactly what we were <laughs> here for. Uh, but I want to thank you all for joining us here on the Think Different Podcast. This is Will Frank. And I love every single one of you. All right. Have a good new year.